Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include The EU pledges further funds as the Syrian crisis escalates The coming of the Fourth Reich, the far right, has arisen Polish minister wades into the FUD war over UK-EU exit And economic crisis averted in Euroland as EU Commission announces pay increases Finally, Met Office get in a bluster as wind farms destroy weather forecasts. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, up from our homepage. The Syrian crisis is hotting up with a media frenzy after the tragic and horrific killing in Aleppo. But are the public softened up enough for the invasion to begin? Here at the unit, we're disgusted by the biased reporting that has taken place over this issue. It's a barefaced repetition of the Iraq weapons of mass destruction propaganda machine at work. The insurgents are funded by Western powers, UK and USA in particular, and the connections between the CIA and Al-Qaeda cannot be overlooked, and indeed, the public evidence is everywhere across the internet, as a few simple Google searches will reveal. This article in our top 10 section details further 100 million euros being pledged by the EU to bring humanitarian aid. Across the world, alternative media sources such as Here at the Unit are crying foul play. Once again, it seems the state is making unpopular decisions that no one has mandated and no one agrees with. That's EU democracy at work. We've written about it and talked about it. There are even ebooks in our resources section that you can download about it. The coming of the Fourth Reich. This is a critical piece of news, hardly mentioned in the mainstream media, but captured by Euroactive on their YouTube channel. This article and supporting video looks at the rapid rise of the far right extremist parties. Cecilia Malmstrom attempts to shift blame to isolated pockets of terrorists and lone wolves. She doesn't explicitly talk about Al Qaeda, but it's the same thing. The article in our video library carries the details, but I think it's worth noting that the root cause is the EU's ceaseless desire to continue deep austerity across many EU nations. The people are rising up against this tyrannical monster. Anonymous announced a global uprising against tyranny, and now many extremist parties across Eurozone nations are on the rise and gaining much support. Our eminent economics editor, Dr. Eric Edmund, predicted this would happen over a year ago. Check out our audio interview with Eric and hear him talking about this. How does the EU respond? Exactly as we suspected, it shakes its official fist whilst branding the people terrorists. Next step, legislation. Increased police powers and greater control from the state. As ever, here at the unit, we'll be watching. Polish Minister Radak Sikorski has joined with the rhetorical battle plan of spreading fear, uncertainty and doubt about what will happen to the UK if it leaves the Eurozone. Since David Cameron's rather loose pledge to hold an EU referendum, there has been statements throughout the Eurozone and beyond about the cataclysm that will ensue if Britain leaves. This article looks at the Polish Minister's attempt to play swing-step tango with the FUD bogeyman. You can relax, we're already investigating the truth behind these claims and we will have another Eurocon documentary considering the facts behind these claims soon. It seems our Boswellian Bureau kleptocrats just can't get enough of the European Central Bank's inflatable fiat currency. This article looks in detail at the salary increases announced by the EU Commission. Once again, the FUD, fear, uncertainty and doubt, machine is brought into play with hints that the Commission officials could thank Mr Cameron for the rise. What? You're taking the proverbial! <laughs> Here we go. Do you know, today's stories are just getting more and more obscure. This article looks at the Met Office's objection to the construction of a giant wind farm in Carmarthenshire. Never mind the true facts that the Westminster puppets like Clegg have already been publicly outed as having a deep conflict of interest with UK wind turbine policies, or anyone in the mainstream media looking at the connection between green policies and the United Nations Agenda 21 mandate being implemented since the convention in Rio. 
Now, the Met Office has objected to the proposal on the grounds that the construction of this giant wind farm will ruin its weather forecasting ability. I think I need a cup of tea and a Prozac. Today in our video library, uh, something with a lighter flavour and a little hint of humour. Katerina Moussasos talks to the EU. Today we launch a brand new show on our website, Eric's Analysis. Now I'm really delighted to tell you about this new section of the website that we're launching today. Eric's Analysis, which is presented by Dr. Eric Edmund. Now, Eric worked for many years at the Bank of England and has a broad and deep understanding of economics, having graduated from Cambridge. In these shows, Eric looks at specific aspects of economic and political policies and analyses their implications. You can view the first episode today in our video library under the section Eric's Analysis, and of course, the links are below. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word program is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.